Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to Global Interrupted Speaking Session number 168. Thank you so much for joining in today. Today is Sunday, and our host, our topics master is Samridhi. Samridhi, thank you so much for chipping in again today with your interesting topics. And I'm sure you will have interesting topics because young people have different thought process, different perspective over life. Let's see what you have got for us. Today, we are all going to manage our time by ourselves. We speak less minimum one minute and more than two minutes and 30 seconds. Let's manage our time uh, with estimate. And let's see who, who, who takes uh, more than two minutes, 30 seconds and who speak less than one minute, one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not take much of your time, but to give this podium to Toastmaster Smriti as the host are the topics master of today's meeting. Thank you so much. Let's put our hands together to welcome Smriti on virtual podium. Over to you, Smriti. Thank you, DTM Amjad Ali, sir, for the great introduction. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, Cavaliers, and dear guests. I will be the table topic master for, today, for today's session. And I don't have a theme for today, and I'll be asking some random yet interesting questions. So without any further ado, I'd like to start with Toastmaster Savita. Toastmaster Savita. Yes, Samriti. For you, I have the topic yeah, a question. Is there such a thing as perfect? Is there such a thing as perfect Toastmaster Savita? Thank you. Uh, table topic master Samriti and my greetings to everyone present here today in this forum. Perfect. I also used to wonder if something is there which can be perfect. I used to ponder. I used to sometimes ask some of my seniors or who has gained more knowledge. And with my whatever experience I have gained in my life, I don't see anything is perfect. Everything has got imperfection or something or something is missing. And we don't know the, what is the definition of perfect or if other way, if I think, however everything is, everything is perfect. There are two ways we can take the things. One is nothing is perfect. Some limitations, some deficiencies, some drawbacks are there in each and everything. And if other way we think we don't have any other control, then whatever, everything is in but whatever order, it is perfect. So I think it is up to us how we take the things. A child in his or her atmosphere, whatever best is given to him or her, whatever he becomes, it is perfect. Because that is the only possibilities or limitations or the opportunities he or she gets. So perfect for everyone changes according to me. And in a way, nothing is perfect also. So I have two minds. <laughs> let, let everybody ponder about this and uh, find out their own perfect things in the life. Thank you. Back to you, Samridhi question to ponder. <laughs> Thank you, Toastmaster Samita. I think I quite agreed on the topic. Next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Sumit. Toastmaster Sumit. Hi. Good evening. Just give Good me a evening. second. There is a little bit more. Uh, I guess I'll just move on for now then. I'll call Toastmaster Summit later on. So next up, we have Toastmaster Sherman. Right, madam. So the topic for you is, when was the last time you regretted doing something and why did you regret it? When was the last time you regretted doing something and why did you regret it? Toastmaster Sherman. Madam Table Topic Master, Global Interference. 
may all we have regrets when you look look back sometimes you feel why did i why did i did not i didn't do that and because of that reason or something like that uh, you are regretting so i couldn't uh, the past the final examination of chartered accountancy because i am regretting now i can say because uh, i was trying hard and the syllabus is changing the i did all the syllabus then again the, they introduce a new syllabus after so then i did at and diploma in accountancy and again started the license sheet examination so the license sheet examination also i took two attempts and got through then i was doing some the it's called uh, professional levels couldn't do it because of work life and if i had the courage and i changed my uh, daily routine and attitude i could have passed but i have taken very lazily or easily i couldn't do it because of that reason i am lamenting or regretting and i have a lot of work to do now to to hold my job <laughs> you know so after that i did some executive diploma in accountancy in charade institute of in sri lanka and i have practical knowledge more than 30 35 years but uh, still i couldn't run the 100% charade accountancy audit firm so that's the regression and also maybe we have some other regressions also uh so that's the only the main regression i have and with that knowledge i can pass my children also whatever you can do your uh, in your single life you pass it and you read the knowledge and examination knowledge is power knowledge is not only the power knowledge is has the leadership knowledge is have the everything so over to you madam table topic master as moves for can do master sharman next up i'd like to call toast master sumit again if you are will yeah thank you please please okay so the topic for you is what simple fact do you wish more people understood what simple fact do you wish more people understood toast master sumit uh there are multiple things uh, which uh, i think most of the people do understand also but they do not understand also for example one of the most important thing is like we do not value our time uh, i what i literally think is like we do not have to sleep for 10 or 12 hours in a day or even 8 hours if we adjust our body clock in such a sense we can uh, even 6 hours a day of sleep is enough if we are doing some meditations and exercise and parallelly organizing our day into all these exercises parallelly working in our office we can uh, properly optimize and utilize our day 6 hours of sleep is important for us parallelly uh, and valuing the time whatsoever we are left with if we are sleeping for 6 hours let's say 18 hours is left and parallelly utilizing it in a more better way not much uh, using it to procrastinate or overthinking on the things which do not add value to our life uh, that will be a very important fact everyone can understand yeah. over to you toast master thank you for the amazing speech and now i'd like to call toast master samriddhi toast master samriddhi yeah hi i hope i'm audible as well as visible yeah so the question for you is if you could choose to see only one color your whole life which color would you choose and why if you could choose to see only one color your whole life which color would you choose and why toast master samudhi 
Thank you, Table Topic Master. So I would just reiterate for the benefit of all. So my topic is which color I would choose if I am to see for the whole of my life. It just has to be one color. So I would choose white color because I think white brings a lot of peace and simplicity to my life. And also I believe it's a color which I can see every time. It won't even harm. It won't even harm my eyes and everything around. And also I think white is one of the most beautiful colors which not only brings peace but also it accompanies with serenity. Like as an example, whenever we find peace, even for example, whenever someone dies, we generally wear white color to show the peace that we have to pray for a person and everything that. I think that's all over to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you, Toastmaster Samriddhi. And now I'd like to call Toastmaster Pratyush. Yes, uh, good evening, Table Topic Master. Good evening. So the topic for you is, what do you imagine the afterlife to look like? What do you imagine the afterlife to look like? Toastmaster those, those Pratyush. Afterlife. Uh, something uh, which I have uh, never seen or have uh, never uh, thought of. But since uh, you have uh, given me this uh, topic, I would uh, imagine uh, myself uh, as the person that I am not in this life. Because uh, why to imagine negative things? If I have done uh, something terrible in my life, then I might have think that uh, after life will be a horrible thing to me. But uh, normal human beings who normally lead their life and do uh, things regularly and they uh, earn their bread and butter, they get out. Every day is a struggle for them. Every day is a challenge for them. They do some mistakes. They do some good things. They do some bad things. After all, I have never seen someone with full perfection as the topic given earlier. I have never seen someone with full perfection. Yes, we do mistakes and sometimes we do certain things which are not correct. But still, we do those things because we have some small certain desires in our life. Yes, we do those things, but those things should not be something that will cause a greater effect, a very bad effect on the society. And if we are leading our life, like a regular human being, then we must think positively about the afterlife. And I must think the things that I won't be able to achieve in my life, that I will get in my afterlife. Because uh, those uh, who are seeing me from uh, up, they will see that the person has really tried. And uh, he really wanted those things. And now, since he has got an afterlife, he deserves these things in his life. I hope. We all do our things positively, move towards our goal with uh, full uh, energy, with full enthusiasm, without any bad or black thoughts in our mind. And then we will get all those things in our afterlife if we do not get in this. Thank you and back to today. Well spoken, Toastmaster Pratyush, and I think I quite agree. Next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Muhammad Hassan. Toastmaster Muhammad Hassan. Good evening. Good evening. So the topic for you is, would you rather lose the ability to speak or lose the ability to read? Would you rather lose the ability to speak or lose the ability to read? Toastmaster Muhammad Hassan. Okay, so my topic is would I rather lose the ability to speak or would I rather lose the ability to speak? So uh, if I have to choose one, so I would actually rather lose the ability to read because if we won't, uh, if we can, if we won't be able to communicate with each other, so then it will be of no use. The This is the greatest gift that we can speak we speak to each other, talk to each other, or we can convey our messages or anything. So I, uh, for me, it is the greatest gift uh, for as as compared to the uh, that we can read or not. So uh, 
say i'm not only able to read then uh, it doesn't matter because if we can speak and we can talk to someone then it would uh, really uh, a good thing thank you for the topic over to toastmaster sam thank you toastmaster mohammad hasan next up i'd like to call toastmaster amjad ali toastmaster amjad ali think he will take at the last okay can you call me at the last please if you don't mind so okay so next up i'd call to master geeta hello hi hi yeah. so the topic for you is would you rather be the absolute best at something that no one takes seriously or be well above average at something that is well respected by others i'll repeat the topic once again would you rather be the absolute best at something that no one takes seriously or be well above average at something well respected by others over to Thank you geeta certainly i would prefer to be above average well above average and be respected by the society that is more important for me being the best of everything or being the best of something and not being acknowledged by anybody nobody listens to me nobody wants to pay attention to what i'm saying that will not be uh, suitable for me at all so i would prefer to be a little above average or well above average at least when people are listening to my views when they are understanding what i want to convey to them when they're trying to listen when they have uh the concentration in what i'm saying and when they appreciate what i'm saying that will be far far above being the best or being the perfect so nobody i according to me nobody is perfect nobody is the best you can there's always a scope to do better whatever even if you reach the pinnacle even if you reach the zenith point topmost point there's always a scope to do better so mm-hmm. if even if you are the best if people are not appreciating if people are fulfilled with criticism for you they, if you do not that means i am not uh, able to convince them that means i don't have the ability or maybe i am arrogant i'm arrogant and proud that the nobody so it is better to be compassionate loving convey your message to the world and if they accept that nothing can be better than that if i want to be a motivational speaker if i want to be a speaker even if i'm not amongst the top most even if i'm not the best but if i can relate with people if i can make them understand what so i can do a lot for the society i can do a lot for my now for the people around me so that is far more preferable to me than even as a, i'm a teacher i'm a teacher and i love to talk to my students i may not be the best teacher but if i'm above average and if if i can teach my students well if they can understand what i want if they can relate it they can love me nothing more than that that's all what i want i never wanted to be the best and i'm sure i'm never the best thank you over to you tibo thank you for the amazing speech toast master geeta and next up i'd like to call toast master prashant toast master prashant yes smriti so the topic for you is what would you truly regret not doing if you died tonight what would you truly regret not doing if you died tonight to master prashant getting my global inform to friends the for question for me is if i died tonight and what the regret i have uh bell i never think about the same actually no one think about when they are uh, going to be die so we are very optimistic people and always thinks in the positive direction rather than thinking any negative and why why we can think about the negativity in in this world we have come with a purpose and the our purpose to what we achieve so far and what is we are going to return back to the society so if is there any thought like that i never thought like that so whatever what i am doing at this moment and what i am going to back to the society that is my important aspect rather than thinking yes i am going to die tonight that's my thought over to you thank you toastmaster prashant now 
I'd like to call Toastmaster Umar. Toastmaster Umar. Yes, Samriti, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Just so good. I, I handpicked this topic for you. <laughs> really? Oh, may God help me. <laughs> I'm saving this topic for you. So the question is, do you believe in things such as fate and destiny? Why or why not? Do you believe in things such as fate and destiny? Why or why not? Toastmaster Umar. Oh, that is an interesting question. I believe in fate and destiny or not. Actually, I can say for that, I do not because we create our own destiny. So we what our actions, our thoughts, and all the things that we do in our life. Sometimes we mix those things that are consequences of our action as, okay, this is my faith. It was bound to happen and all that thing. So a lot of times people will give an excuse. If it is my, it was in my destiny, I had to do like that. Come on, you could have done better also. You had choices and everything. So you put a blame onto the destiny, destiny and fate. Oh, it was my fate and everything. No, that is not the case. You should be responsible for your own action. You should take ownership for your own actions also. Because if you are taking ownership for your own actions, then you can grow and develop. But if you are putting blame on the destiny, okay, it was in my, it was bad luck. I was not lucky enough and all that. No, these are all excuses. Well, and those excuses are only given by those people who have not put in the effort, the dedication, the work that is needed to do that. And they are not living some, doing something that they love and passionate about. Because if you are passionate and loving what you are doing, you will not, you will excel in it sooner or later. So that is very important because instead of putting everything on, okay, this is my destiny, oh, this is what I want to do, have high hopes. Be positive about what you are going to do. Because if you are going to go on a path of success, you will have a lot of obstacles. You will have a lot of challenges. It will never be a smooth road. So what you want to do, take ownership of your actions, be responsible and be mindful of what is happening in your life because if you are not if you are not in control of who you are if you are not in control of your own actions then what kind of person you are who we are if we can't even do things on our own own with our free choice if we are not able to do things by our own freedom and free choice then we are not ourselves. And in order to be ourselves, we have to do things on our own terms. And we will never put blame, blame on the destiny and fate. Over to you, Table Topic Master. Well spoken, Toastmaster Umar. And next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Jesse. Toastmaster Jesse. Yes, 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 Samriti. So the question for you is, if you were to be stranded on a deserted island, what three items would you pick to take with you and why? If you were to be stranded on a deserted island, what three items would you pick to take with you and why? Toastmaster Jesse. Guess global Toastmasters or global family, good evening. If I know I'm going to be stranded in the desert, I'll take a lot more things that are, that are required. But these things happen um, unexpectedly. But knowing that I'm going to the desert and anything can happen, I will take, the first thing I would take is a strong power bank with a mobile. That is one I will take. And take water sufficiently because sometimes you, you can't get to the city or something to get water. Water and three things you said. One, I take a good mobile. Another one is uh, water. And the third thing could be 
or um, maybe what some food to survive maybe but as long as that water and uh, my mobile is there i can reach out to the people as long as the the, the power bank is strong enough for at least for 24 hours that it can take me i can reach out to people uh, many people who have got stranded and uh, these uh, helicopters or what you call them uh, chop choppers they come and pick them up simply because they have they've been able to con uh, connect with outside world and then uh, they have saved but people who go with the without any planning they end up not being able to reach out to anyone most probably this is this is the time that connectivity matters more than anything if you have a strong power bank that will take you for a longer time and a good connect uh, connecting mobile uh, you are able to reach out to people i i am not very sure in the desert you can your mobile will work or not i will have to ask navin about it so I, that one thing because you take all these things and then uh, there's no um, connectivity then probably uh, i'll be a fool so before i take in, before i take these things i will ask what what works there oh, you know so preparation what shows this is whenever you go to the remote places where you you are not sure of the area, take precautions, ask people, take the location, make sure you tell some people that you are going to such and such place. This is very important. Uh, I live alone and whenever I go to the beach, I tell my friends because I get scared of these waves and I don't know if I will return. Uh, the, before going also, I have that fear uh, that maybe a big wave will come and uh, sweep me away into the waves. So I tell my friends, I tell my children saying that I'm going to the beach today. So at least they know that is the fear I have. I always tell people also, whenever you go to the places that you don't know, make sure that you, you tell people and better know the place and take precaution. Over to you, Samriddhi. I like your ideas. It, it, it's like you're going on a deserted island, actually. <laughs> so next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Thanumi. Toastmaster Thanumi. I guess they left. So I'll skip. And next up, it's Toastmaster Nerusha. I hope I'm pronouncing everyone's name correct. Toastmaster Nerosha. I guess. Not there. Okay. Okay, next up, Toastmaster Sangeeta. Thank you. Yeah. So the topic for you is, how would you describe your perfect day? How would you describe your perfect day, Toastmaster Sangeeta? Thank you, Toastmaster Samriddhi, for giving me this wonderful topic. How do I describe my perfect day? Friends, every day is a perfect. We can live our life as a perfect. But my definition of perfect is what I want to do on that day. How I spend my time how I communicate with people, how I crunch my, um, uh, crunch my uh, thirst, and how I um, live with my uh, family with harmony. That is the perfect day. Friends, we create our own destiny and our agenda, day-to-day -day agenda. It creates our perfection, how, I, how we are living, in our life. So to make the day perfect, we need to do the fruitful thing. We need to remain positive in life. We need to remain creative in life. Friends, I'm a mother of twin boys. And 
after um, 12 um, uh, after 12th standard they went to canada for study and after that i was very much uh, i was living in a life of depression and one day i came to agnel toastmaster club before that i was thinking that my life is over and i have nothing to do because my boys were my whole world but when i joined toastmaster i met the friends like you they motivated me they inspired me they transformed my life in such a way that i started living my each day as a king life ki i am a king i am a queen because i was uh, sharing my my thoughts with others and there are so many things in our life which we can if we share we can inspire other people so if we are able to inspire other people we are living our life fullest so friends every day is a perfect day you need to prepare your day in advance that what you want to do with that 24 hours and it is a gift from god so i feel that now i am living my all day in a perfect manner so what to the table topic master thank you to master sangeeta and i'm very glad that you joined those masters and i'm happy that those masters could be a help to you and next up i'd like to call to master farida good evening good evening so the topic for you is do you think more choices mean more opportunities do you think more choices mean more opportunities to master farida a very good evening my global impromptu family members and a lot of new guests which i'm seeing tonight it's a del- it's really delightful to see all of you let me tell you this that life is not easy i have been listening to everybody's speeches so maybe that's why it's it's a bit of a residue from there that life is not easy nobody guaranteed you a life as a bed of roses no nobody told you that who guaranteed you a life full of roses and very easy peasy without any challenges the fun of life is to have the challenges and to face them head on and to conquer them and move on to the next challenge and this is where opportunities come around all of us in our lives have opportunities knocking at our doors from the moment we are born from the early childhood we have opportunities to excel in sports we have opportunity to excel in our studies we have opportunity to go towards music we have opportunity to adapt and learn new things from our parents from our cousins from our friends now it is up to us whether we absorb the positive things the good things the progressive things or the negative things things which can be disastrous to our personality can be very um, it can bring us failures in life it can take us down the wrong path so this is up to us which opportunity we opt for so uh, in our life we life is full of opportunities in fact there are some people who feel that oh my god i have not been given the same opportunity as others this is not true if you would have looked hard enough the opportunity would have been there maybe not in the same form maybe in some other form but it would be there is just up to you to grab the opportunity personally and from my own personality i am a go getter i grab on to opportunities and this is what i have taught my children to do as well in life so i tell them that if there is no opportunity find one make an opportunity for yourself if there is no door if you feel that all the doors are closed for you find a window get in through the window find your opportunity find your success do your hard work do your perseverance do not allow the hardship of life to desiccate you into nothingness you have come to this earth with a purpose in life fulfill your purpose live a meaningful life and that would be my take for tonight a very good evening to everybody thank you to master farida for the amazing 
I feel like I quite agree on the topic. And before calling the next speaker, I'd like to thank Toastmaster Jesse for taking over the role of a timer. Thank you, Toastmaster Jesse. And next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Owner. Yes, good evening. It's Omar actually. It's like a constant uh, typing mistake. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, so, no. Omar. so the topic for you is, if you could choose to be anyone in this world other than yourself, who would you choose to be? If you could choose to be any in this world other than you. Well, Fellow Toastmaster, distinguished guests, Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all of you. You know, when you are in a Toastmasters meeting and you are among the audience and then there is a table topic master who has a bunch of topics with her, you at that time wish to be that table topic master so you could avoid all those awesome questions and their answers to it. But if I got a chance to choose someone at this time, who would I choose to be? Probably the richest person at this world who wants to travel outside the world to be the richest person in the universe or someone who has the control of everything what we are doing right now, a Google or a Facebook owners. But actually I would like to be a person who I always wanted to be, my father. Because he is the reason actually that I could stand over here or sit over here and speak to others. The confidence which he gave to me and the pat on the back, which always shows, Umar, you can do it just take the first step that's always with me and probably that is one thing which i miss in my life nowadays because since he's no more i believe this is the only thing which i'm missing in my little world if i got a chance to be someone i would be like my father so that we could know or shall i know where i'm doing wrong and how can i improve myself they say you only know about being a parent when you actually turn into one. I remember I got my twin sisters and when she got her daughter, she came to my mom and said, mom, now I realize how hard it was for you to take care of two of us. And I can't sleep even carrying one of them. So once you became someone who you really appreciate, is then you actually got to know how special they were in your life. And the moment you realize that they were those special ones, unfortunately, it's too late for you to knock onto that door because the door is being locked, not from your side, but from the other side. Toastmaster of the day, back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Umar. And I think your father is really proud of you right now. Even though he's not with you, I'm pretty sure that he will be looking down on you from heaven and thinking, wow, what a great son I've raised. So next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Sujita. Toastmaster Sujita. I think it's Sujit. Uh, I think it's Sujit. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, okay, I'm no, sorry you should. to you. I'm so sorry for the mistake. So, Toastmaster Sujit, the topic for you is Do you believe in karma? Do you believe in karma? Toastmaster Sujit. Our life is destined to be the way we kind of contributed or what is our deed. And whatever we do, good, bad, doesn't come in any other generation or any other life. It is, it is we, we kind of experience this right here, right now only, within this lifetime only. And I'm a firm believer of karma. As such, I'm afraid of doing bad karma as well, since I believe on that. 
So I think that's it from my end. I have not could think better about it. Thank you, Toastmaster Sujay. And next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Indu. Yes, thank you. So the topic for you is, do you think too much knowledge is dangerous? Do you think too much knowledge is dangerous to us, Master Hindu? Okay. Uh, good, evening, uh, good evening to the Global Impromptu family. And uh, the topic given to me is, uh, is too much knowledge dangerous? Yes, I, I mean, I think it depends from person to person. So there are people who... Uh, who, uh, who have an abundance of knowledge and who use it for the right uh, purposes and you know the right kind of goals. Uh, sometimes knowledge is also about, uh, you know, when you, when you have too much information, sometimes you are confused, you know, to make choices. So you, you, you can delay, um, you can delay the whole process. And so that's why um, it can, too much knowledge can be dangerous for you if you uh, if you are a person who uh, takes a long time to make decisions, you know, to pursue some goals, um, because um, it will just, uh, you're presented with so many opportunities and so, so many options. And so you're not able to decide, you're not able to pick one because you feel that each and every option looks tempting, looks interesting, uh, you know, looks appealing to you. And therefore, uh, you could get confused. Uh, so again, I'm talking about uh, knowledge in terms of, you know, uh, like opportunities. Uh, so I think that is my take on this topic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Indu. Next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Naveen. Yep. Hello, good evening. Good evening. So the topic for you is, do you think happiness means the same thing to everyone? Do you think happiness means the same thing to everyone? Toastmaster Naveen. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Happiness is a state of mind. And I do not believe that happiness means everything, same thing to everyone. And the reason is because I can choose to be happy in spite of any circumstances which are going around me. Happiness is something which is innate, which is inborn, which is a quality inside a person. A person can choose to be miserable. A person can choose to be happy in spite of anything of what is going around. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, that is uh, one of a close friend of mine. He had lost a hell lot of money during this the, during the past two years because he was in the hospitality business and uh, the situation took a turn when tourism dipped across the globe. Uh, he, he had his, uh, his hotels out there in India and unfortunately a, a big amount of loan piled up on him with no revenue model for his hospitality business. And he, he became in, in, a, in, a, in a fixed 21 situation where where the, the banks were after him. Now the, now, now the thing is that in this type of situation, anyone would have been miserable, anyone would have been devastated because he was virtually destroyed in, in, on terms of his uh, financial aspects. But yet, yet he, he was able to renegotiate in, in some ways or the other. And, and, and the thing was that he became, today, he, he, he's, he's one of the happiest person around because He's, he's got his loan extended for almost about five years only because of his negotiation skills. And he was able to think wisely despite all the obstacles he was face, facing. So now the thing is that whether you're happy or you're not, it would depend entirely on you. It would depend on, on what your state of, of mind is when you're faced with obstacles. And because there are going to be obstacles for everyone at every phase of life, at, at any situation. But how you react to it lies in your hand. And of course, the happiest persons are not those ones who have got the, the best things with them. It's the ones who make the best use of the things which have been given to them, whether they may be in abundance or whether they may be in, in paltry sum. So happiness is a state of mind. Over to you. 
Thank you to Master Naveen, and I feel like I quite agree on the topic, and I think it was an amazing speech. So next up, I'd like to call to Master Vibha. To Master Vibha. Yes, Abhiji. So the topic for you is: Is there a period of time or era that appeals to you? Is there a period of time or era that appeals to you, Toastmaster Vibha? Thank you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Samriddhi. Uh, it's really a good topic. In everyone's life, there there are there are some particular time which appeal. I agree with this topic. That yes, I. Have the such such that that particular time, which uh, appealed me, uh, at that moment. For example, I would say that I feel proud of my father, who gave who who brought me in a different way. He always made me sit with him, and he used to share his. Uh, experience and different small stories so that i could relate the things in that childhood age so uh, there are many examples in my life which i can uh, share with you for example if i am sitting here and uh, for example i would say that uh, once he he described me karma and at that point of time i was so small i was a young kid and i was not understanding what is karma and what is giving and receiving and all but the thing is timely uh, gradually slowly and gradually i got to know what is karma and if we follow karma if we follow the morals and whatever morals put into me by him i can see in my children in my behavior in my surroundings what i can go do like if i am i got <laughs> yeah if he if he um, brought me be, with such a, a morals so that i could apply in different phases of my life and i feel that that time and that particular person is appealing for for uh, he appeals me um, sorry i can't. thank you samriddhi over to you i think that was a nice try even though that didn't directly answer my question i think i got the idea quite got the idea of what the answer was so next up i'd like to call to master dinisha to master dinisha good evening samriddhi good morning uh, sorry good evening so the topic for you is would you rather be able to teleport to anywhere or be invisible whenever you want to would you rather be able to teleport to anywhere or be invisible whenever you want to to master dinisha uh, what a lovely topic uh, good evening to all of you uh, i haven't even think of this type of thing to happen to me uh, i don't want to be teleported to anywhere because i am afraid of especially going alone and sometimes i am afraid of living alone alone and departed with the other people especially at night and in the abandoned area so i don't need uh, to be teleported to anywhere else so it's better if i can be invisible then yes, there are some moments that may i may need to uh, hide from the other people if they uh, if i don't want to be in those situations to face those things 
sometimes uh, different things happens which we do not which i do not like so in that places if i could be invisible so i would like to be that uh, somebody it's uh, it's uh, it's a uh, opening for me to think what else i can do if i can be invisible if i were invisible i would like to be that and i will think on more uh, over to you to master somebody thank you to master dinisha next up i'd like to call to master sundara to master sundara i think they left the thing so next up i'd like to call to master uma to master uma yeah good evening good evening so the topic for you is if you could control one of the elements which one would it be and why if you could control one of the elements which one would it be and why toastmaster uma what an imagination good evening toastmasters i have heard that there are five elements that is fire water then wind can i take it like that so if i can imagine that i can control wind can i ever imagine that it is one of the important necessities of man especially during this pandemic time and i realized it when i was affected by covid and when i went to the hospital there i realized how important air is to man there when i saw that when people were in the icu suffering and uh, what do you say they were gas gasping for breath how important air is it is one of the essential elements that we need to survive and now i'm i don't know whether i have deviated from the topic but i thought that i will take wind as one of the elements or air so i can never imagine that we can survive without air and it is one of the essential elements which we need in life and that we realize only when it is not available to us and the day when i came back to my apartment which was full of greenery i realized how precious air is i started enjoying every moment of life there in the apartment when i went for a walk i realized that air is so precious and we just cannot live without it and now i am asked to imagine that i have to live without it no i just cannot uh, imagine living without air and if a day comes like that i think uh, it is very very what do you say insecure for man and it will be the worst uh, situation which man is facing now so we have to uh, plant more and more trees and save our environment and see that such a thing never happens so thank you for the opportunity thank you So next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Punita. Toastmaster Punita. Ah, yes, Punita, but never. Thanks for changing my name. Why do I keep making this mistake? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. Toastmaster Punita. Yeah. So the topic for you is: Do you think? Uh, no, never mind. if you were given a choice to lose one of your five senses which one would you choose and why if you were given a choice to lose one of your five senses which one would you choose and why to master pain thank you i'm pretty sure you are preparing for a tall tale contest because the kind of topics which you are giving to all of us and testing our impromptu skills makes me realize that there is some Science assignments which you have got, 
and you are forcing us to be a fiction writer, fiction writer will be the number one bestseller. And in that process, okay, fine. Now, if I have to answer to this question, if I have to lose senses, believe it or not, it's impossible to answer this question. Why? Because when you have these five senses, that's what makes us human beings. In fact, there are animals out there and you be human beings out here. And it's all these sense organs which makes a great difference. Now, with regards to your topic, I'm not going to give you content for your English assignment or your science assignment. But having said that, let's face it, yeah. Like, you be human beings have uh, like the kind of eyes, eyes, beautiful eyes to see this powerful world, ears to listen to your amazing voice. Of course, my name was pronounced strongly, but that, that's so good. That, that amazing nose and the boot, and of course, this beautiful fresh scenery of nature. What else? Skin, of course, we need this. This is like our external protective gear, and what else? Yeah. And tongue, of course, how will you know the food, the taste of your food without your tongue? So, yes, Toastmaster Samriti, I would not prefer to lose any of this sense organ because these sense organs are is what makes us human beings. Now, you and I right? I cannot see anything. I'm seeing a blank version of Farida ma'am out there in front of you. I cannot even see I can just see orange color in front of me. Now, if I if I remove the spectacles and keep it aside, I'm actually a blind man. So ask a person who owns a spectacle, and I'm sure you do realize the importance of power of spectacle, right? Isn't it? So yes, we both of us have four rights in this process. But anyways, having said that, I'm really sorry to disappoint you that I'm not able to give you a content for your upcoming English assignment or science assignment. But yes, thank you so much for this wonderful topic. And yes, it's always great to have an appreciate the sense of it because that is what makes us different from the rest of the audience. So the rest of the audience is like animals, etc. Back to you, Toastmaster Samriti, and I'll pronounce your name correctly. Thank you, Toastmaster Samriti. And I actually gave this topic out because I thought I was the only person who actually had this views. Because whenever I asked a person, they were they actually cho like choose one of the uh, one of the or uh, senses. And I was like, am I the only person who would choose to not choose any of them? So <laughs> thank you for the speech. So next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Pragya. Hi, Samriti. Hi. So the topic for you is, do you believe in horoscopes and zodiacs? Do you believe in horoscopes and zodiacs, Toastmaster Pragya? Early morning newspapers. The page where zodiacs tell you how your day is going to be. That was something which I used to see a lot when I was around 20 years old because I believed that the newspaper and the things written in that will let me know what am I supposed to do in the whole day. But the worst part, I wanted to do the things which were written in the horoscope because I thought those were the best decided for me by somebody sitting somewhere who might not even know how to read stars, but he knows and he tells me what am I supposed to do. One fine day, I went to the love of my life. He proposed me that particular day. And you know what I did? I said, you should not be doing it today. It's not a good day for me. My horoscope says that I am going to have a disaster for my life if I decide anything today. Keep it on hold. Wait for a few days. Once my horoscope is fine, then you come and propose me again. He was looking awestruck. Have you gone crazy? You keep asking me every single day on what do I think of our future and now when I'm coming to you and proposing, you want to say, let's wait for the horoscope? Seriously? And I was damn serious. I told him, you don't know. If my horoscope says I am going to have an accident, I am sure going to have an accident that day. Even if I get stuck by a phone, but it is an, it is an accident, right? And the horoscope comes true. So I was somebody who used to read these horoscopes a lot, a lot. 
to the extent that I started believing that without reading, reading a horoscope, if I go out, it is going to be a complete disaster. And being from a Brahmin family adds starts to being a horoscope reader. Your mother, father, relatives, everybody tells you to read a horoscope and do anything in your life. But soon I realized that if I keep believing on things which somebody else is trying to read through some stars which I have not seen, which I'm not aware of, and pro probably the evil that person is not aware of, I decided one day that from today onwards, I am not going to read my horoscope. Rather, do reverse. So I did not read it in the start. I read it at the finish of my day. And soon I understood. Neither me nor the person writing it has any idea of how my stars are going to work. So that is the only learning which I got. And that particular day, I decided to say yes to the love of my life. Because he said, if you are not doing it today, your stars are going to change. Because I am not going to ask you again. So I would say that only believe in things to the level where you feel you do, you can do it or can't do it. You never know the person who's reading it. You never know whether the stars are there or not, but you know that you can design that destiny. Do it the way you would want your horoscope, your day, your hour to be. And trust me, it is going to be the wonderful horoscope. Over to you. Okay, I think the speech is over. Or, yeah, I think the speech is over. So, next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Dinesh. Toastmaster Dinesh. Yes, Samriti, good, e good evening. Good evening. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Yeah. So the question for you is, if you were given a choice to be any creature except for a human being, if you were given a choice to be any creature except for a human being, what would you want to be? Toastmaster Dinesh. Uh, well, uh, nice question. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to be a cow. Because uh, we are treating cow as a mother, and uh, cow is uh, we see uh, God in cow, and we all the time, uh, every day in the morning we uh, we we perform puja. Uh, so cow is uh, I would, uh, the reason for choosing cow because uh, uh, cow gives uh, milk to to uh, small children, small babies, because without that, uh, children won't be able to survive. So after mother, uh, they are heavily dependent on the cow's milk. And because of uh, cow, uh, you have the uh, so many things which uh, we won't get it from anywhere else. So I remember uh, in my native place, uh, we we uh, we have cow, and uh, my my great grandmother used to uh, used to take a very special care, and she used to uh, give uh, food all the uh, food on time. So, and cow cow also used to uh, give same kind of uh, respect, uh, whatever she was getting from uh, my grandmother. So. That was a very uh, fascinating moment for me, and uh, so over to you, Samriddhi. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Dinesh. And I was expecting the person, whoever I gave the talk, gave the topic to, to answer a bird because I've heard so many people say that they want to be bird but your perspective clearly changed my mind. So next up, I'd like to call Toastmaster Naveed. Yes, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible and visible. So the question for you is, what is art according to you? 
So what is art according to you, Toastmaster Naveed? Well, thank you very much, TM Samridhi. Good evening to all of you. What is art according to me? Well, when I was in, in metric, uh, my parents were asking me, what will you choose, art or science? And uh, at that time, it, it, the, the answer was because I wanted to be a pilot, I used to uh, uh, say hi to the airplanes whenever I see them. So I, uh, in, in my in dream, I was, uh, I used to see that I will be a pilot. So uh, definitely I choose two sense. But uh, according to me, my sister uh, has now chosen the field of art uh, in bachelor. Uh, she has very creative ideas in terms of uh, they, she used to uh, sketch different type of uh, paintings and in my family everyone has some unique uh, talent I used to uh, sketch and write um, what Arabic quotations or Arabic verses uh, on, on, the, on the wall even and my parents said that uh, why you are writing on the walls? Uh, and I, I, this, this is art. I said this is art. And according to me, art is not only sketching paintings or write, uh, doing paintings, but art is also in your work. When you are do, when you are doing something in your office, when you are you have creative ideas. And whenever you are having, uh, doing your thing, your work in in deep way, you can say you will have art. But I think I am not having good ideas on this. But thank you very much. Thank you, Dosmaster Navi. And I think almost everyone is done now, except for Toastmaster Amjad Ali. So I'd like to call Toastmaster Amjad Ali. Yes, ma'am. So the question for you is, what do you think is the definition of peace and harmony? What do you think the definition of peace or harmony? Toastmaster Amjad Ali. Thank you so much, Madam Topics Master. What is the definition of peace and harmony according to me? That is believing the reality, understanding the reality, accepting the reality is actually peace and harmony to me. Do you have control over life? I don't think so but you have control over your emotions, reactions, understanding. For me, life's pers perspective is completely different than you. The way I speak, the way I perceive life is completely different than you. But there is one common thing in between all of us that is accepting the reality wherever we are. Mm. And if we accept it, believe me, that will give you peace, that will lead you to harmonize your life with everyone around you, your family members. I think I'm quite lucky enough to understand this philosophy, not 100%, but most of the time. Accepting the reality, living with it. If I'm in a problem, accepting it and introspecting, where did I do the mistake? And when I'm winning it and accepting the win and understanding where did I get support from other people? Because I know I'm not capable of this thing. I'm not capable of achieving this. There is somebody who is supporting me. There is someone 
who is praying for me that is harmony for me that is peace for me whenever i commit a mistake i knowingly unknowingly i blame myself and if i win somewhere i always give credit to my parents i know they are praying for me my sisters praying for me my family my wife my kids my they are praying for me i know that and i really know that i'm not that capable we all do same things we hard work or we work hard every single day similar way or similar or the other but the thing is somebody achieves more somebody achieves less but one thing lies behind all these successes and achievements is consistency and i find myself a consistent person whenever i'm at a position in a situation on a task that makes my life harmonized that gives me peace because after that i can go home i can sleep well peacefully when i deal with my family i peacefully speak to them and i'm confident whether they agree with me or not my friends do agree with me or not other people they agree with me or not but i know i'm peacefully okay with myself because i have tried i have given myself the best to my ability live the reality understand it trust me you did not choose your inception you did not you will not choose your end so just enjoy living the reality wherever you are accept it realize it introspect it and make it worth living because there are billions of people are deprived and they have no even they cannot even think what you are living right now thank you so much back to you ma'am thank you dj mamzad ali i feel like that's a speech that every one of us agrees on right now and if if you're left if anyone is left and they haven't spoken yet please tell me in the chat box so uh, yeah yeah and i was just going to you okay so it was plus so, so okay. yes so the topic for you is if you could live the next 24 hours and then erase it and start over just once what would you do if you could live the next 24 hours and then erase it and start over just once what would you do to master subhi uh can live for the next 24 hours and then erase it yes and then start over again okay so what would i do okay thank you uh, madam tab uh, table topic master i can have my 30 seconds to recollect my thoughts right of course and you can even ask to change the topic if you want to no i will stick to this topic and some people are worth melting for and i'm pretty sure you all might have that kind of people in your lives i had mine and there are times when you are not able to express them that you actually want i remember that there are times uh, there was a time when uh, i wanted to express my very uh, dear friend uh, about what i really wanted to but i could not and same happened with me when i lost my family one of my family members in covid there are a lot of times when you are not able to uh, express yourself and just because you are a bit shy from them or maybe just because you don't want them to actually know what your heart holds so if i would have gotten a chance to live for the next 24 hours i would have got i would have gone to each and every person whom i feel is so close to me but i am unable to express because i am not that kind of a person i would definitely go to each of that person and tell that person about how i feel about you and how important you have been in my life and the significant 
changes I have had uh, by having you people. And um, then maybe I can start over because I am a person, I am the least confrontational person when it, when it comes to confrontation. And uh, also I am a very uh, shy person while expressing my thoughts. And I'm pretty sure if I express my thoughts to anyone, I am not able to uh, have a connect with that person after then. So I would definitely want to uh, share and express all those things for those 24 hours and uh, then start over. So I would definitely do that. Thank you, Table Topic Master, over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Surbhi. And I think we're just closing. So I I'd request someone to give me. Thank you, Smriti. Really appreciate it for uh, managing this entire show successfully. Ladies and gentlemen, who would like to give a topic to our uh, host, Smriti? As interesting as she has given us the topics. Who would accept this challenge? Okay, Puneet. Can I try Amjad, sir? Yeah, oh, I think please, go ahead, to, I, think I, would, I would call your oh, name Puneet. as Puneeti, yeah? I'm telling you. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, because... Please go ahead. Please go ahead. It's okay. It's good. No, it's always good to have a different name, but yes, thank you so much. So, Toastmaster Samriti, I'm going to take revenge of my name and also... I think the other Toastmasters, Naveen, no, no, whose name you mispronounced? Yes. Sujit, so I'm sir. Gonna... Sujit, sir. Sujit, yes. Toastmaster Sujit, yes. But it's okay. <laughs> it's fun to make mistakes. So it's from a Shakespeare's line, one of the, I think, the topic is, which I also got for my club level contest, which I'm going to share with you. What's in a name? What's in a name, Toastmaster Samriti? This is a topic that for which I'll have to take 30 seconds to think about it. So, okay, <laughs> I'd like to take my 30 seconds. Just a second. So you can take one minute also. It's okay. It's a very <laughs> difficult topic. <laughs> but yes, provided all of us are hungry, so make sure you do it as soon as possible. And my father mm -hmm. is holding me really badly. Come and have milk right now. So I can't wait to hear your... Okay, yeah, taking your time. Sorry. Okay, I think I'm ready to speak. <laughs> Hopefully I am. So my topic is what's in a name? And this was the topic, uh, this was a quote that Shakespeare wrote to a girl named Rose. I did my research. So <laughs> uh, the uh, full line was what's in a name that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So I think the top, uh, so I, what I th think the quote means originally is that it doesn't matter how we uh, express or communicate with a person as long as that person actually gets the idea of what they mean to us, uh, or maybe I'm getting the wrong idea, <laughs> or uh, the idea of what they are in our life and i completely agree with this topic of course it's spoken by one of the greatest poets out there and what i think of this topic is that as long as you are able to just tell someone how how much they mean to you and how much they are in your life it's all right even though yeah, there are so many people that are not able to express at all how they feel about each other. And I feel like that's fine as long as they're not, uh, as long as they're actually caring for them and as long as they're not just being ignorant. And I think even though a lot of people don't, uh, aren't able to speak what they want to, it's really like shown in their actions. And as long as they're caring, that's enough. Thank you. Even though I was not able to speak on this topic, thank you to Toastmaster. 
wonderful at mc farida ma'am and everyone whoever has turned on their video is applauding so it's very tough topic but really appreciate see farida ma'am is still clapping so that shows the kind of impact which you have done back to you distinguished host master amjad please on coffee break i believe But yeah, thank you for the creative table topics, and yeah, I'll hand over the virtual stage to you, Toastmaster Samriti. Very good topic, Samriti. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Really appreciate. Uh, who was the timer today? Did you? Nobody, right? Okay. There was no time, time, but Jesse uh, T M Jesse came for a bit. All right. Thank you so much, lady. Can we all give her uh, give us uh, Tosma Samiti a big hand for managing this beautiful show? Samiti, kudos. Keep it up. Keep it up. Um, thank you. Personally, I'm proud of you. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with that power vested in me, in me as a host of this very meeting, I adjourn the meeting. Thank you so much. Stay blessed, and keep your society safe as well. Bye bye.